Let's have a look at optimistic concurrency control. Up to now we've discussed pessimistic strategies for concurrency control. They are called pessimistic because they assume that transactions will conflict and therefore they protect the database integrity by using locks and locking protocols. Now we will look at optimistic concurrency control. Here we hope for the best, we let the transactions run freely and only at the commit we check whether conflicts have occurred and whether transactions need to be aborted. The idea behind the optimistic concurrency control is that non-serializable conflicts are relatively seldom. Locking requires a lot of overhead, so by taking the optimistic approach we save this locking overhead. And in the optimistic approach we only invest time and efforts if something has gone wrong. Under the optimistic concurrency control, transactions proceed in three phases. The first phase is the read phase. The transaction is executed, but the updates of the transaction are not directly written into the database. The updates of the transaction are collected in the private workspace of the transaction. Next is the validation phase. At the moment when the transaction tries to commit, the database management system will test whether the execution was correct, so if there have been only acceptable conflicts. And if not, if there have been unacceptable conflicts, then this or another transaction will be aborted to resolve the conflict. If the current transaction is not aborted, so the check succeeds, then we get to the write phase, then the updates of the transaction are written to the disk. They are made permanent in the database. The phases 2 and 3 are performed in an uninterruptible critical section. In optimistic concurrency control, the validation is typically implemented by maintaining a read set and the write set for each transaction. So the read set records what objects have been read by the transaction and the right set records what objects have been written by a transaction. There's two flavors of optimistic concurrency control. There's a backwards-oriented optimistic concurrency control and there's a forward-oriented optimistic concurrency control. Let's start with the backward-oriented flavor. In the backward-oriented optimistic concurrency control, when a transaction TK tries to commit, then we compare this transaction TK against all committed transactions TI. And we check the following. We check whether TI has committed before TK has started. That's fine. So we ignore all the transactions that have committed before TK has started. If TI has committed after TK has started, then we check the following. We check whether the read set of the current transaction has no overlap with the right set of the transaction TI. So what is the problem if there's an overlap? The problem if there's an overlap is TI has committed after TK has started, so that means that TK may have read an old value that has in meanwhile been overwritten by TI. So that's what we don't want. So if TK has possibly read an old value, then we have to abort TK. In the forward-oriented optimistic concurrency control, the check proceeds as follows. We compare the transaction TK that wants to commit against all the running transactions TI. So not against the committed transactions TI, not looking back, but against the running transactions, so we look forward. And we check the following, namely we check whether the write set of the current transaction has an overlap with the read set of the still running transaction TI. So if so, then TI possibly has read an old value, at least if we allow TK to commit. So there's a conflict. If we allow TK to commit, then we have to abort 
ti, because ti might have read an old value. On the other hand, we can also resolve this conflict by aborting ti. So in the forward-oriented congruency control, we have a choice, either we abort tk, or we resolve the conflict by aborting ti. If we abort ti, then we can still commit the changes of tk to the database.